Air conditioners. They are everywhere. They attach themselves to buildings like giant metallic parasites. These ugly box-like engines of destruction suck enormous quantities of energy from our common electric grid as they blow seductive streams of bacteria and fungal spore-laden cool air into the unsuspecting homes of their hosts. And all the time, they vomit hot air back into our already far too hot external environment. It becomes a vicious circle. The hotter it gets outside, the more heat they must pump out from inside, reducing their efficiency and forcing the consumption of even more electricity to compensate. The more energy they use to drive their overburdened compressors, the hotter they get. And as they vent their heat to provide comfort for their private hosts, it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter for the rest of us. Even small air conditioners can consume thousands of watts per hour. The technology of these poorly designed parasites is so primitive that utility companies as well as consumers tremble every summer they start feeding on the grid, fearing inevitable brownouts and blackouts that don't just inconvenience us, but cost millions of dollars and can even be life-threatening. And to sate the rapacious electric hunger of these beasts, equally greedy corporations build more and more coal and nuclear-powered electric plants that threaten everyone on the planet with disaster. But what if there was another way? What if there was a technology so advanced and yet so simple that it didn't need the electric grid at all? What if there was a technology that removed heat both from the inside and the outside, making us all more comfortable and safer every time we used it? That technology exists today. It is called a solar adsorption chiller, a space-age vacuum tube-powered heat pump that uses sunlight itself to keep our homes cool inside and out. Unlike conventional air conditioners that use ozone-destroying chlorofluorocarbons, the CFCs responsible for the Antarctic ozone hole now causing increasing skin cancers in South Africa and Australia, the solar adsorption chiller uses lithium bromide, a safe food additive. The small amount of power they need to blow the cool air it produces into your home is provided by a solar electric panel. Thus, this revolutionary air conditioning system uses the sun's light to defeat the sun's heat. The hotter it gets, the cooler you get. Where can you see this incredible innovation in operation? The Audubon Environmental Center at Debs Park in Los Angeles is one place where summer heat and luxurious cooling go hand in hand without any negative impact on our environment and without contributing to global warming. Let's let solar engineer Les Hamasaki, who built the system, describe it to us. This is a Kenton solar air conditioning system uh, that we have that it stores at least 1,200 gallons of water in this tank that he it's heated up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the heated water will go into this absorption cooling system that will separate the heat from the cold and create the uh, chilled water to chill the uh, uh, air conditioning. And this uh, absorption chiller is a 10-ton Yazaki absorption chiller system that uses one-tenth of the energy to uh, cool the building. And so if you are in a remote area like we are on a standalone system, you can not only cool your building during the summertime, but also heat it during the winter. But you can also dry beans or distill water or desalinate. <laughs> have hot water from uh, this whole system. And uh, in areas that you have water problems for consumption, you can pasteurize the water. And so with this solar thermal uh, heat pipe uh, vacuum tube technology, there are many applications also such as the medical autoclave to sterilize medical instruments. Steam, not uh, uh, yeah. you, you, you know, condense the, uh, the, the steam and then it comes up pure water. So you can create these small uh, distillation systems that you just plug it in and generate. The bigger one, you can uh, have the, uh, uh, the flash uh, system where you can lower the temperature through a vacuum system and it starts to boil. Uh, at the low temperature, like 140 degrees. So it's just small units where you can 
heat it up and just co condense the water and then collect the, the, the you know, vaporize it and so forth. See, because yeah. the drinking is only about 5% of, of the water. The 95% is used for washing or flushing. The building here does not have any connection to the sewer grid. It's all contained within the property where it's treated on site, both the black water and the gray water, and it's being purified through all of these various technologies. One final note. While this typical Egyptian apartment has three air conditioning systems, we make that four air conditioners in this tiny apartment. You might still argue that they don't take up as much room as an entire solar air conditioning system with the vacuum tubes on the roof and with the chambers and coolers. However, this would be false reasoning because the solar air conditioning system not only eliminates the need for air conditioners, but for the entire power plant itself. That's right. Using solar technology, there's no more need for nuclear power plants, coal power plants, or oil-fired power plants that pollute and cause endangerment to our environment. For Solar Cities, I'm T.H. Culhane, cooling myself naturally by the sun.